Good morning, sunshines. It's about 6.15 in the morning right now and I am heading off to the coffee shop to get some work done. I had like four clients yesterday so there's a lot of client notes to get done and then I have a lot of just catching up to do in the Get Your Phone course uh, group community and so I'm gonna be spending my time doing that today and I thought it would just be good to like go and get a nice hot drink and like get out of my office so that I can focus. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me today, okay? Um, let's get going. So a little tip for you guys who are obsessed with um, exercising. I know lots of people who have an exercise addiction. Um, exercise needs to be one of the first things that you do in the morning. So I know for me, it's like, let's let this best pass. Ooh. So for me, like I would wake up at like 5.30 in the morning and I would be at the gym by like six o'clock, right? And that had to be like the first thing I did. So my tip to you is to get dressed first thing in the morning. It really, really helps to get your makeup done, brush your hair, put on clothes, get all like nice and just like look good, you know? Spend the time, spend the extra little time to make yourself look good, put on nice jewelry, do all of that stuff, um, and do that right in the morning. It definitely will reduce your desire to uh, exercise and make it a little bit more difficult. Cause it's like, once you get all dressed and ready, it's like, you just don't want to get dirty, right? Um, so it's just like one little tip, obviously. I'm not saying like that's going to be what cures your addiction to exercise, but it's going to be one little tip that really helps get dressed right away. Um, helps a ton. Today I am wearing my jacket that I'm wearing to my sister's wedding, this like cow print fur jacket. I have a little cute top, my little booty boots, black, and I'm feeling good, feeling fly, right? And ready to just get straight to work and I didn't work out this morning. I got a uh, chai latte with whole milk and it looks really, really pretty. It's really super tasty. Um, I'm also in the group course right now. There are a lot of um, positive things going on. I put a challenge up every single Sunday. Today is Tuesday and literally like nearly everyone already did the challenge. I'm like, good job guys. Like they're just like rocking it with the food challenges and I'm trying to be tough with them too. Uh, I'm trying to be really tough with them and they're just, they're doing them and I'm like so surprised, so, so, so surprised. So it's really, really, um, such a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, Chai feels like, Chai literally feels like fall in a cup and I know it's like almost about to turn summer, but Today it's a very like foggy day and it just feels so good to have a nice little cup of joy. I love how this person in the group is literally responding to the food challenge saying I feel like I don't have any fear and it's just so cool to hear that because this is coming from someone who just two months ago had a long list of fear foods and now she's like wait a minute after being in this group my fear foods are gone anyways I'm also creating a bunch of carousels and content and stuff for Instagram so working on that this morning So I just got home from the coffee shop and I knew I was going to forget that I'm filming today. So uh, let's chat about what we are chatting about today, which is intuitive eating. Um, intuitive eating 
is this big thing that kind of blew up the last past couple of years. And it's a word that we just throw around out there um, all the time. And um, I want to talk about the three things that I think you should know about intuitive eating. Um, so let's chat about the first one here. Wait a second, let me make sure these are getting cozy on all sides. Um, so the first thing I think that you should know is that if you are on my page, if you are someone who has suffered with um, disordered eating, amenorrhea, you're struggling uh, with um, being in energy debt is what we call it, okay, or low, you have a low metabolic rate, um, intuitive eating isn't something that you can do or something that you should strive for doing uh, right now. And I know that sounds really weird because it's like, what isn't this whole journey about finding food freedom and like doing all that? Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> probably like, what am I doing? I have the peas in my hand and I'm putting them in a bowl. Um, and you might be really confused by me saying like, hey, you shouldn't be doing intuitive eating. Got peas and butter here, simple, simple. Um, but the reason being is that when you are in energy debt or when you're still struggling with your eating disorder, you can't rely on your current hunger and fullness cues because they're all wacky and all messed up because of the energy debt. Your body, when it is um, in that low metabolic state, it just doesn't even produce hunger signals. And the eating disorder voice doesn't want you to... Um, I'm going to show you guys putting sweet potatoes on the plate. Your eating disorder voice doesn't want you to be eating. So, of course, it's always going to tell you, hey, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. And so if you were to listen to that, I got my bowl of food here. Done with it, though. Some marinated red onion that I uh, made the other day. And I'm just going to put that on top of the uh, on top of the little green peas here. Just a little bit of onion. Um, so the eating disorder voice doesn't want you to eat. And so if you listen to it, you're just never going to eat enough. So what what to do? Because you're like, but I want to be an intuitive eater. And I'm like, okay, cool. What you need to do is you need to first recover. And then we can talk about intuitive eating. So I think that that is really... Whoa, I just dropped that. Sorry. I think that is really... Look how beautiful this plate of food looks. Ghee, uh, Moroccan spice sweet potatoes with peas and lots of butter and some of those onions on top. Um, but if you want to be an intuitive eater, it's like, great, let's recover. Let's recover and let's um, get to the place where we see all foods as good foods. Oh, I'm going to put some parsley on top. Yes. Um, and once we get to the place where we see all foods as good foods and we have our period back and our metabolism is running nice and hot, then 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 we can start becoming what we call an intuitive eater. So that's like the first thing that I want you guys to know is that beginning of recovery, you're not there yet. I didn't become an intuitive eater, I would say until like months after I got my first recovery period. And mind you, it's not just about getting the period back. I got my period back, it really was just a point in my life where I had like really eliminated all food rules and really worked on my relationship with food. And so by the time I got my period back, it was synonymous with the time that I, um, you know, I wasn't exercising. So I had a healthier relationship with movement. I, um, I had a healthy relationship with food and was eating any and all food. And so I think that's kind of an important thing to just mention is that, um, you can get your period back and still be really unhealthy with food. And it doesn't mean that your body's done healing. For me, it just happened to really be the time that my body was uh, done healing. But I would say that it wasn't until like, a, a, you know, months after, maybe another five months after having monthly menstrual cycles, uh, that I still was very just kind of regimented with my uh, food. And really not uh, at the point where I was listening to all of my hunger and fullness cues yet. I was definitely like near of that, but I wasn't um, an intuitive eater yet. I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that if I wanted to maintain my health because it was just too close to my time of restriction. I was like, I need more months and potentially a whole year under my belt of like purposely trying to eat more to recover until I can like step into this like, all right, let's like figure out how I want to do food thing. So, all right, I'm going to go eat this yummy food. 
If you didn't know, I have about 18 chickens on our property and we like them to, you know, just roam around the garden. So here are three little chickadick dicks just hanging out. Okay, so here is my very simple just leftover lunch. I had this last night with pesto chicken, but ran out of that. And then I'm ending lunch with some chocolate. Ended up having six of these little squares, so it was pretty much two rows of it. To end off lunch, I just wanted a little couple pieces of dark chocolate. Hmm. I want to show you. Oh, dang it. There's not one in there. Okay. You can kind of see there's uh, nuts in here, almonds. Tasty, tasty. I like love, love, love ending lunch with some chocolate. It's just the best. Mm -mm. Got a nice little check because I talked about eating disorders at this mental health uh, organization here in my hometown and so got a nice little check from speaking which is really bad um i am going to whoop, open it back up my computer work outside in the garden for a little bit i do have uh three consultations for the get your phone course at uh, one o'clock it's like 12 30 right now so i'm gonna be uh just working for the next little bit and then um hopping on those calls with people to like discuss if the course is for them, if it's gonna really help them get to where they wanna go in terms of their relationship with food, getting their period back, all that, so. Why do they make shoes so tight? I can't get them off. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna like start sweating. Okay, let's try this foot. Oh my gosh, I can't, like, I cannot for the life of me get these stupid boots off. Um, wait, I do have to send, I have to send a Zoom link real quick to um, the person who I'm talking with about the course today, because that's in a couple minutes. Okay, so the next thing that I have to just say about intuitive eating is that I do kind of have an issue with it. One, I really just, why do we have to label ourselves? And especially it's like, why do we have to label that we're a normal eater? It's kind of like, it's, I don't know, to me it's the equivalent of like, I get really mad when I see their organic produce section at grocery stores. So I'm like, why do we have to label organic? Like, isn't that just like the default? Shouldn't this just be like normal? And then everything else it says like, this is, you know, farmed, pesticide, whatever. And it's kind of like the same thing with, uh, with eating where it's like, why do I have to label my eating as normal? Like, isn't that funny that we have a label for normal eating? Like, shouldn't that just be like the automatic default that like 99.9999999% of humans like experience? Anyway, so the thing that I have against intuitive eating is kind of just intuitive eating in and of itself and not actual intuitive eating. I'm talking about the whole, just like, the whole trend of intuitive eating. Um, I find uh, with a lot of my clients, uh, what I found when I talk to them and they share their journey of trying to intuitively eat and everything, it, but it kind of turns into like, how can I perfectly eat what my body is desiring at the perfect time um, and eat to the perfect level of satisfaction and eat according to my perfect level of hunger all the time. So it becomes kind of like this like hunger and fullness diet thing. And I really just don't appreciate that it becomes another thing to just try and get quote unquote perfect and to overanalyze and to um, and to be paying a lot of attention to. And I think part of normal eating is not always eating foods that you like and sometimes eating a little bit past comfortability. And um, those are normal things. And I feel like with intuitive eating, um, it gets taken um, for this, like, how can I perfectly listen to my body? Now, I know that that wasn't the initial intention of the um, Evelyn, you know, AAA, the woman who... Uh, 
really kind of brought uh, intuitive eating to the forefront of people's minds. No, that probably wasn't her intention, but that is what a bunch of people who are coming from a dieting mentality kind of make it out to be. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I don't like giving people that label really of like intuitive eating because I just see it yeah I just see it missing them up way more so I just want you to be you and an eater so what I wanted to say is I caution you against turning intuitive eating into another kind of dieting thing or another way to control and to manipulate your food and how much you're uh, getting of it um okay I see that the um the girl is here to talk about the course so I'm gonna get going and I'll see you guys in a second if you are curious as to if the course will help you get to this place of freedom that you really desire and crave for your life, then I highly recommend hopping on a free 15 minute call with me and we will chit chat um, about whether this course is going to be the space and the community and the education, the inspiration, the type of guidance that you need to come to a place of just full freedom with food, health in your body, and also balanced hormones. So you can click the link down below to find my schedule link to get that all set up okay so she just signed up for the course so i'm going to be um looking here's on my private dms but i'm going to be looking out for her in the uh group chat so we'll see if she is started yet okay i of course an airplane goes by like right now there's never airplanes that go by above my house waiting for buses to go by, waiting for airplanes to go by. This is my whole day of vlogging, I swear. Okay, um, I just finished talking with those uh, three girls about the course. We got two signups and one who is going to, uh, who is going to be potentially signing up tonight. It's really funny uh, talking with people and some people are so like gung-ho, I'm done, I cannot live another day in life counting calories and like being obsessed with food anymore or being stuck in like the restrict binge cycle and then other people are like still stuck in that fear of recovery, that fear of investment, which I get it, that makes sense, trust me. Um, I was there too for such a long time, but it's just so interesting uh, seeing the difference and I just, I love it when I meet people who are like, I'm gung-ho about this this is awesome. This is going to be the thing that is going to get me to full recovery. I'm sure of it. I'm going to invest my time, my energy, and everything into this. And I'm going to, I just, I'm going to recover. And they come with that like attitude. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, the course is made for you, honey. <laughs> um, so anyways, I'm really excited about those two that signed up and about the uh, third one who potentially will sign up today. Um, I have been sitting down and working for a while and I'm starting to get that like, my brain doesn't work anymore. So I'm going to go to the gym right now and then um, I have my friend who is coming over for dinner. So we're going to make dinner tonight. I haven't thought about it at all. I don't even really think I have things in my fridge. So I might need to just like call her after the gym and be like, do I need to go pick up stuff? Like, am I making food or are you making food? Um, I know it's my house, but like, can you make food at my house? Is that bad to ask? Like, can you just bring everything? To make um so yeah i wish this was like a lot because then i'd ask you guys or maybe i'll go over to instagram if you don't follow me on instagram i'm there all the time but maybe i'll go ask my instagram like hey any fun yummy recipes that we can try today um but yeah i'm gonna go do that go move my body a little bit it's gonna feel good it's starting to get like warm out maybe i won't go to the gym maybe it's nice out maybe i'll just like go on a beach walk to be determined, I will see you guys at dinner tonight. So, and at dinner tonight, that is where I will give you my third thing about uh, intuitive eating. So stay tuned.
the two things that I like religiously go to this store for are these things, which are, I don't know if you can see really, they're like, could open up the package. They're like sesame crackers, like not crackers. It literally is sesame seeds and sugar. <laughs> That's it. So it's like kind of a, mm, like a granola bar. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of those like, what is it, the Nature Valley, like, green granola bar things. Um, they're just, like, chewy, yum, little things. I usually buy them in the, like, I don't buy them in the mini size usually, but they were out of the big size, so I bought just, like, a bunch of mini size. You can see there's, like, little yummy sesame bites. They're so good. And then I also went to this store for their uh, halloumi. So this is just, like, grilled cheese that gets so, mm, like you can grill the cheese. Like, isn't that just like the most genius? I'm gonna put this back there with the rest of the veggies. Uh, isn't that like the most genius invention in the world? Grillable cheese. It's just like, I'll have that for like breakfast and I put a little like honey on it when I, um, when I fry it and it's like delicioso. Okay, so the third thing to note about intuitive eating is that Intuitive eating is not uh, anti-nutrition and anti-understanding what works well for your body. Um, it, when it comes down to it, it really comes down to the intention. So for example, I could have someone who comes to me who is allergic to dairy, okay? There are people out there who really just cannot handle it, all right? Now, of course, in my line of work, I, you know, go to the root cause of why could you potentially not be um, digesting and assimilating dairy? Do you have a low metabolic rate? Have you restricted it for a long time? Of course, we gotta look into that stuff, but let's just say outside of eating disorders, right? There are people who generally are lactose intolerant and just really can't handle a lot of dairy. So they might not purchase or eat a lot of dairy, but it doesn't mean that it is like a dogmatic dietary rule. Rather, it's an understanding of like, dairy doesn't work well with my system, so I'm going to practice gentle nutrition with myself, and I'm not gonna eat copious amounts of dairy all the time. So I think that's something that a lot of people get wrong with intuitive eating, is that they think it's just to like, eat whatever, we don't care about nutrition, there's no such thing as like, you know, eating well and all of that, and I'm like, no, that, that's really, no, that's really not the intention of it. The intention is to get you to, to not have like a rigid rule set around food. Did that just make sense? The goal is to get you to not be rigid around food and to be able to sit down at anyone's dinner table and just eat. Um, I think that's always like the main goal, but it doesn't mean that you disregard what's working for you. Like, for example, I have certain, I, this is so weird, but like certain yogurts just like don't sit well with my stomach. I don't know why it's like Greek yogurt doesn't sit well, but, but um, other types of yogurt and it's just, it's certain brands. I don't even know how to explain it. Certain brands of yogurt, my stomach is fine. Other brands, no. My stomach hates it. Like, my stomach hates it. So, I don't go out of my way to buy a lot of yogurt unless it's those uh, brands that I know of. Um, but I also don't fear the yogurt and never eat things. Say, if I was going to go to a restaurant and they had a yogurt tzatziki sauce, like, of course I eat it. So, it's understanding what works for your body and also understanding very, like, very um, flexible nutrition. Why? why so that your mental health can stay sane um and so that you can participate in just eating i'm really excited because oh i wish you guys could smell this this is just like i love this store it's called the european market because they have like all the random stuff that other stores don't have like they have apricots right now i haven't seen any other store have apricots so excited but the grapes i'm going to freeze them i love frozen grapes like i love that what else did I get? I really didn't get anything like too fun because I like have so much stuff at home. Um, as far as like staple stuff, I just needed a couple like fruits and veg and that's really all I needed from the store. Um, so that was it. That was a day in my life. Is it gonna continue? Oh, my friend Shuba had to cancel on dinner cause she got her period and she was like, I'm really not feeling it. So I was like, I understand. 
I understand that we're gonna do dinner tomorrow night, um, which means that I'm probably just gonna go and eat with the family tonight because I didn't feel like cooking to begin with. So when you live with family, eat their food. <laughs> it's pretty much what I've learned in life. So thanks for following me around today, guys. I will see you in my next video, but only if you subscribe and please again, hit the like button because it took a long time to make this video. And so if you watched it, it's a great way to say thank you. Okay. Mwah. Love you guys. Bye.